Hello and welcome to the big picture. The political atmosphere in Delhi has been charged for several days now with all eyes on the intrigues going on within the BJP over the anointment of Narendra Modi as the party's prime ministerial nominee. The formal announcement seems to be a formality now, despite the party patriarch's stiff opposition. We are actually told that he is not, he is not attending the parliamentary board meeting right now. However, today we will try to look at the larger picture. Why is the party keen on projecting a leader? Is it that the only way to overcome certain deficiencies by turning the elections into a kind of presidential contest? Will turning this around be able to overcome the problems of caste and criminal vote banks? Will anointing a prime ministerial candidate put BJP's main rival Congress in a fix? And more importantly, how do the electorate of India view a presidential form of contest in a Lok Sabha election? These and many questions will crop up now following the decision of the BJP, which we will discuss today with Tapan Sen, CPIM MP, Professor Balveer Arora, retired chairperson of the Center of Political Studies, JNU, and Smita Gupta, deputy editor of The Hindu. Welcome to all of you. Smita, I would like to come to you first. You know, the, the, much drama is on and the latest news is that Mr. Adwani has refused to attend the parliamentary board meeting. But, you know, let us, let us keep the, the immediate drama which is happening aside. Why do you think that the BJP is so keen to, um, you know, project a prime ministerial candidate? Well, I think the... There are two uh, aspects to this. One is that Mr. Modi himself has pushed himself into that slot. And the second thing is that if we look at the, uh, uh, the map of India, and uh, there are parts of the country where the BJP simply does not exist, whether it's Kerala, Tamil Nadu, uh, the entire Northeast, um, in Andhra, it has a, a marginal presence. West Bengal. So, so, so you're, therefore, forget, I, you're forgetting I, your home state. And of course, uh, 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 West Bengal. But uh, you see, if you look at uh, the the way the B BJP has been behaving of late, it doesn't have anything that distinguishes it very much from the Congress. If you see the recent um, um, Parliament um, session, uh, they endorsed the food bill, they endorsed the land acquisition bill, um, they endorse Insurance. the pension bill. So therefore, to the, the only thing area where they can distinguish themselves from the Congress is to say that we have a strong leadership. Because on the Congress side of the fence, you have the Prime Minister who is perceived to be a weak candidate. You have uh, Rahul Gandhi who seems to be a reluctant candidate. So the BJP appears to uh, think that by projecting somebody who is sort of quote unquote a strong a person, someone who is seen to be uh, a decisive uh, uh, person and that might tilt uh, the scales in favor of the BJP. Also Mr. Modi seems to have struck some kind of a chord with urban India and especially with the youth. Right. So I think basically that's why the BJP uh, is try is uh, feels that you know in the absence of, uh, of any other key issue, of course, as we have seen recently uh, in uh, Western Uttar Pradesh, the BJP has given up on um, the whole um, um, development issue, which they had claimed that they would be using, and they have gone back to the communal agenda. So whether it is the VHP Yatra, whether it is the uh, communal uh, violence in Muzaffar Nagar. There have been in sporadic incidents in Rajasthan, Bihar. It's the same. It's the same old early 90s story. Right. So a decisive uh, sort of uh, a strong man plus the communal agenda. That seems to be pretty much the BJP strategy. Okay, uh, Professor Balveer Arora, you, you know the the the, the if, if we remember the BJP as it was in the 90s before before um, uh, 1995. You know, there was a lot of, lot of talk. The BJP was always talking about collective leadership. Is that something which the party has completely given up? I think uh, part of the shift is to be attributed to the development of uh, electronic media and mass media and technology. This is something that we see in a lot of systems. Uh, the personalization of politics right. and uh, politics as a 
spectacle spot as it were people are anxious to see uh, the people who are going to lead them and they enjoy the sparring the fencing the debate but i think there is uh, another issue here which i would like to uh, highlight is that there is on the one hand the personalization of politics and then there is the personification of policies right i think we should be looking at the personification of policies which means that what does the person represent as an option as a choice for the country and to that extent if mr modi uh, is packaged as a particular type of leader who is going to lead the country in a particular direction and i'm not here wanting to uh, uh, say uh, how it would polarize or or endanger the plural nature of uh, indian polity and society i think that is something that possibly will alert persons to the dangers ahead so you packaging is what is what is happening in 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 present day politics as you i think you rightly pointed out the advent of the electronic media the sharp focus and the 24/7 uh, you know the, the cameras rolling 24/7 these have these have made an impact but you know you think that this packaging is is what is, is what we are seeing now not not the reality but the packaging a lot of it is packaging a lot of it is spin a lot of it is perception management right and i think that is part of the game of manipulating opinion and Uh, all said and done the media lends itself to that because uh, it is its bread and butter it needs uh, to capture eyeballs it needs to capture viewers and so they they it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship they the the two are uh, linked but it there is a big danger of polarization there is a big danger of uh, for the very same reasons that uh, the presidential system was considered unfit for india for the size and diversity and plurality of indian polity for the very same reasons this type of presidentialization of uh, uh, the uh, contest is something that uh, could have serious implications but 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 are you are you convinced that for, as far as the bjp is concerned they they would think that it is the it's the best bet to presidentialize the elections at least uh, the candidate that they are likely to uh, announce uh, seems to think that his personality uh, his uh, uh, magnetism i don't know if he attributes to himself a certain charisma because uh, i think uh, it has worked uh, to some extent uh, with the electorate in gujarat this it uh, has worked to a great extent is one the election uh, by that's true uh, and so uh, uh, maybe there is uh, a conviction that this is the um, line to take that it's the personality which is going to win them the election and therefore they are looking and they've been looking for a long time uh, for an adversary to have a one to one adversary sort of uh, debate and and so far uh, i think they have been frustrated because uh, the, the other side is not uh, biting okay uh, but, but professor balveer arora what i would like to point out is you know today in this in, in this age of 24/7 television channels we are in, there is this feeling which is happening as you also pointed out that this personalization personalization is happening the presidentialization of the elections and all that but even in 1995 96 the bjp at first when when it projected when adwani projected the um, uh, atal bihari vajpayee as their prime ministerial candidate a similar attempt was made and they and they succeeded though not in 96 in in 98 and 99 they succeeded to a great, great extent yes so but you know it was at the third attempt uh, 96 they didn't succeed 90 uh for Eight. 13 days mr vajpayee stood without being able to convince uh the parliament the lok sabha in 98 uh, there was a little success it is a fact that mr vajpayee's personality 
uh, was something that the BJP could consider as an asset because he did round off the rough edges and the people saw in him a sort of conciliator, a sort of uh, possible meeting ground. Right. And let us not forget that the BJP was in a ghetto. I mean, it was an untouchable party that Absolutely. came out very clearly in 96. Nobody was willing to touch it right. with a barge pole. And it is Vajpayee's personal contribution that he managed to convey through his uh, personality that uh, th things could change. Right. So uh, whether uh, you, you need the same type of personality. Now, so the, we don't, the, contra the contrast, the contrast, the contrast I, I, is quite stark. I personally stark. think that it's a very different. So the contrast is quite stark. Quite stark, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay I, let me go to Tapan Sen. Tapan Sen, you know, yeah. we, uh, you, 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 your party, the, the CPIM is some is a party which believes in collective leadership. It doesn't. It, it tries not to project project a single leader. But you know, Jyoti Basu, whether you liked it or not, was seen as a, as the tallest leader, a towering personality in West Bengal. But and you election after election, he kept winning, and he was the unquestioned leader. You think a similar situation is what the BJP is trying to create for itself at the national level now? Now, why should I not like it that Jyoti is our tallest leader, why? No, no, no. I, uh, talk, uh, anyway, no, no. secondly... I'm talking of the collective... Second, uh, the, your, secondly, your, secondly, your party... Okay, your party I got you. Your party philosophy you. of collective leadership. Yeah, yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. Oh, oh, number thing, number number two, the, I, I, I look into the whole thing is a total degeneration of the democratic values in the pluralist par parliamentary democratic system. Now the country is going to face election in the days to come. Right. Issue is not before the electorate, which policy is better, whether the manner we are being governed today, whether the people is better, how they can be better off. Not these issues of policy and approach, but it is a fight between the two individual, two person, right. as rightly termed, the personification of politics. Right. And this personification is utilized as an instrument a company orientation when capital rules the democracy. The whole corporate domination in the democratic system, the corporatization of the whole democratic governance, this has bring down the whole democratic politics to this kind of uh, degenerated stage where an utter hypocrisy is being reflected in the behavior of the political, demo political community. If you go through the parliamentary debate, during last session, on the say, I, let me cite an example, one about the pension bill. Right. In every other political party representative except Congress, they spoke against that bill. But at the time of voting, <laughs> they voted in favor of that bill except the left. Right. I myself moved the uh, recommend uh, amendment. Left and few others have voted in favor. But everybody spoke against them. This is the so so also at the time of the debate on uh, the FDI in detail, everybody spoke against that. And by the end of the day, the major two constituents build out the uh, the, the particular May motion. So this reflects and political hypocrisy by the political community. And precisely on the foundation of this, this kind of personification, company orientation, or the boardroom orientation is taken place where people are made to see between the two person, not going into the issues which made their life miserable in every aspect. Absolutely. And they are seeking I, a way out to uh, from them. I, I think you are... So, from an issue, it moves to the two person. So, this is what I think rightly you have termed presidentialization. Yes. And this is a danger to our parliamentary democratic system. But the whole system has brought into it. And the main two political formations who are absolutely on the same page so far as these mortgaging economic policies are responsible for this kind of degeneration and hypocrisy. Smita, this presidentialization, this is the... It, I mean, I, the same question which I asked Professor Adora also. Is this the best bet for Congress Party to presidentialize the thing? But, but as but as uh, Tapan was pointing out, don't you think that there is a danger for the BJP that you know this whole thing, as as many people are pointing out, Sudhinder Kulkarni has come out very eloquently uh, yesterday. 
you know, the, is there also not a danger for the BJP that the whole thing gets so personalized that the issues which the BJP could have uh, capitalized on, on as far as the governance issues are concerned are going to get, get, go into the background? They cannot. Well, you know, when you talk about the personalization or the presidentialization of the election, uh, we have seen in the last few months that while the BJP cadres or the RSS has been backing Mr. Modi uh, totally, yes. his colleagues, most of his colleagues, Sushma Swaraj, Anand Kumar, and you know, whether openly or covertly, most of them are quite apprehensive. Mr. Advani uh, may have stayed out. The others don't have much of a choice because they have a political future ahead of themselves. Right, right. They are extremely concerned uh, about the point that you raised earlier. The, the, both the RSS and the BJP have always believed in collective leadership. Right. And Mr. Modi's style of individualism is completely anathema to this uh, you know, philosophy. Right. So they are concerned that, um, a lot of them are concerned that the first thing he will do is to marginalize anybody who has been seen to be uh, you know opposing him right. in case he does uh, you know achieve his ambition right. secondly as far as policy is concerned uh, of course you know this whole the spin and uh, this sort of creating this larger than life persona uh, for Mr. Modi has kind of obscured what he stands for. Right. I mean, the, uh, uh, as uh, the previous speaker pointed out, he is the, uh, you know, without putting too fine a point on it, he is the candidate of corporate India. Right. He's a darling of corporate India because he's given land at throwaway prices in Gujarat. He has been very uh, clever in being able to hide the, you know, anger of farmers. Uh, uh, even as we speak in Kutch, there are these Sikh farmers who he has been trying to oust to build a port for the Adanis. The case is in court, right. but somehow uh, the media has not, uh, you know, focused uh, uh, on, on these things. Yeah. Secondly, you know, the RSS very recently said that the <coughs> talked about reviving. Uh, abrogation of Article 370, um, 370, implementation of the Uniform Civil Code and building a Ram Temple. Three issues that were set aside in, in uh, when uh, Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee came to power at the head of the NDA government. Right. So, you, I mean, you can, and as I pointed out earlier, the communalization of the polity. I mean, the, this is what he stands for. He is very pro-industry. Uh, I, I so think the, he is so fundamentally anti-poor, right. anti-tribal, mm. uh, but you know it's all being obscured in this thing that he he has his magic wand. He will calm the, no, the uh, economy. There will be employment, but this is uh, you know really a farce, if you ask me right no, now. No, but the, uh, uh, Smita, isn't mm. there isn't there the isn't there one of the calculations of the BJP, or mm. you know when when while they are trying to project uh, Modi as a candidate, that, you know, he may be able to overcome this communal and caste was vote banks, which periodic, which several times in several states hurt the BJP. So they think that, they, don't they, don't you think that they think that this is one way of overcoming the disadvantages of a caste or a communal vote bank? How does he, because I mean, uh, what we are seeing in UP after uh, Mr. Amit Shah's uh, entry as uh, as the general secretary of the party in charge of UP, you can see the communalization happening there. Uh, Point I'm trying to make, where the, huh. you know, the, 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 the caste differences are, are merged into a larger, larger uh, uh, majority. No, community. so therefore, that, and then the religious card is being used. Yes. Right. Right. So it's, it's the old story. It's not a new story. It's not a new it's not, story. It's not the developmental story where, which, you know, obscures class differences, caste differences, religious differences. This is not the agenda of modern India. Absolutely. Or, you know, this is the agenda of, uh, you know, a medieval India where you again bring all the religious differences to the fore. You, you create division between communities, between, you know. Uh, see, yeah. the point is that, you know, because Mr. Narendra Modi belongs to the backward caste, there is an attempt in in, in Bihar and in UP to project him as an OBC. Yeah. But you see, they can't do that too much because then, then if you start playing the caste card, then you, you, you might run into, uh, you know, other castes who uh, are uh, inimical. Exactly. So, okay. Anyway, these are issues which I'm sure in, 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 the, coming, in the coming days and weeks and months, uh, before the elections, all these we will we, we'll, we'll, we'll be discussing, uh, you know, periodically. Let me go to Professor Arora. Professor Arora, 
you think that the that the resistance being put up by mr adwani now the kind of resistance which he put up in at the goa before the goa meeting and during, after the goa meeting also when when narendra modi was appointed as the campaign committee chairman what kind of an impact do you think it will have on on the bjp itself and on the electoral prospects of the of the bjp well i think to a large extent it is a drama that is being played out in the sense that mr advani is not consistent mr advani uh, was the one who uh, moved to protect uh, uh, mr modi uh, at the time of the godra riots when mr vajpayee wanted to act right and so today he is in the position of uh, projecting himself as as someone who uh, is less polarizing it is something that ultimately uh in my view uh, the uh, when the chips are down uh, it is what the rss wants that will prevail and all the disciplined soldiers will fall in line but i think what is important is to come back to another point that smita raised which is very important is that the uh, there are multiple agendas right there is on the one hand what mr modi would like to project as the gujarat model of development uh, uh, appreciated and lauded by so many corporates uh, but which does not bear scrutiny if you look at the uh, exclusive nature of that uh, pattern of uh, growth and the number of uh, marginalized and excluded communities there is simultaneously all the other old rss vhp agendas which have not been set aside and so they will, you have they will, they will come to uh, the fore players at multiple levels they will come to the fore and they will be uh, pushed by different actors mr modi uh, will let uh, others in secondary roles uh, uh, play and this is playing itself out uh, in up quite rightly in muzaffarnagar and and the way in which um uh, mr modi is not touched by what is happening in uh, the drama and the atrocities in up right uh, his image remains that of someone who is above all this but as a matter in of fact, fact he is the he's, uh, he's, the, uh, the, uh, the party <laughs> is uh, certainly involved in fact in fact in muzaffarnagar the one of the uh, slogans being raised is about modi itself uh, let me go to uh, tapan sen tapan you know th- it, this is very interesting what is happening now yeah you people last 5 years you did not associate yourself with the upa or the congress party you were you took a you took a strong anti congress anti congress anti government line all these 5 years now don't you think that you know you, you parties like yours are going to be pushed back to align yourself with the congress party with with this development which has taken place in the bjp i think it is uh, too early to make such a forecast I think again, what is the choice? Uh, what is the choice Gris, you people Gris, will have? Girish, Girish, I think you are also missing a basic point, and so you are dealing one-sidedly. This kind of presidentialization, I think both the sides are equally responsible. One, the, one side is projecting Modi, and another side is projecting the the, the, the other prince. But the thing is But that they are not projecting. Between, the, the, please, the, please, the, the, please. The, the complaint please. is that that only, he is only, not only, being projected. Girish, please. Why only that? style is different okay. but the projection is there okay. and between both of them the competition is going on to prove before the international capitalist world that who is much more loyal reformer to the internet with the to to the dotted line of the international finance capital so okay. this is also one of the major issue no, which but should no, seriously no, no, concern will, the electorate i am sure and that along with that please let me complete along with that the modi is having the communal card in his hand because they cannot demarcate with congress in the matter of economic policy right. so the communal issues are there uh, as a card to to uh, play the role uh, in favor of them and similarly congress is also n number of issues to play in favor of them absolutely but the, i agree with you the day, no no i agree with all day, that i agree with all that tapan but the policy will I am talking, policy will remain i am talking of the dilemma which you uh, you as left parties and we other similar parties are going to face in the coming Girish, years we are absolutely in no dilemma we are against communal politics 
forthrightly, okay. without any hesitation. Okay. At the same time, yes. we are against also this kind of neoliberal decoity of right. the nation. Absolutely, but you know, so you, we, you, are, we, we, you we have, are both against both, and we are forthright on it. I don't know whether you can be against both. You will have to make a choice. Anyway, that is that is a, that is a topic for another we, discussion. We are forthright another against that. Another that's day, we will have a discussion on that. So, uh, Smita, uh, coming back to you, last words to you. You know, you, you, what kind of an impact uh, Adwani's resistance is going to have, if any, on, on Modi or, uh, or on the party and on the future prospects? I really think, you know, this is the, you know, curtains for Mr. Adwani, you know, I mean, Mr. Ad for the RSS, Mr. Adwani is a very uncomfortable figure because for the last 20 years, in a sense, even though Mr. Vajpayee was Prime Minister, it was Mr. Advani who kind of dominated the politics of the BJP. It was he who created this entire second line of leadership, which is now the first line of leadership. And uh, in, in, uh, the current RSS leaders are a generation younger than Advani. And so they uh, earlier the relationship was different. The RSS leaders were either of the same generation as Mr. Advani and Mr. Vajpayee or senior to them. Right. So I think their first target really is to remove Mr. Advani from the scene. I really don't think his going will really make much of an impact on the prospects of the BJP. I'm sure it will sadden some of his... Uh, some of the people at the top who have been all groomed, every single one of them, whether it is uh, Venkaya Naidu, Anand Kumar, no, Sushma Swaraj, they've all been groomed by him. No, no, Smita, whether, Smita, my, my yeah, last question quickly, I, I want to, my last question is this, that, you know, supporters of Advani are now saying that, they, that his resistance or his opposition is nothing to do with his personal ambition, but a conviction which he has that Projecting Modi is going to hurt the BJP more than it helps. Do you think that is what that is what is being played out? Well, I'll go along with it halfway because I think some uh, in a way, uh, Mr. Advani could have been um, the prime ministerial candidate uh, in the 90s right. because it was he who brought the party up from two to 82. It, yes, it is true, Mr. Vajpayee was the more liberal face, the face that could attract other people. But at that time, uh, you know, it was there was no doubt in anyone's mind that it was Mr. Advani's, uh, you know, Work. ideology, whatever, like it or dislike it, which had transformed the party. At that time, he he himself stepped aside at the right. Bombay National Executive, and uh, no, you know, but you know, but but now you think that you know it is his opposition is based on his conviction. It could be. I mean, I'm sure that it's a mixture. I don't think okay. it's that you, one can say that it's he's, It's only because he's got prime ministerial ambitions or it's only because he thinks, uh, you know, Mr. Modi will be bad for the BJP. I I would imagine it's a mixture of a mixture the of both. Okay, I think on that note we do need to end. But the fact of the matter is that the presidentialization of the elect forthcoming elections has begun. How it is going to play out in the coming days and weeks, how the Congress and the other parties will react to it and, and how the people of this country will react to this is something we will have to keep a close watch on. Thanks to all my guests, Professor Balbir Arora, Tapan Sen and Smita Gupta. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the same on Monday. Meanwhile, have a great weekend.